Hey, you're about to listen to Believe It or Not. Uh, we're two guys who don't really know what we're talking about, and sometimes we say things we probably shouldn't. That's right. So take everything with a grain of salt. And also, if you do like what you hear, maybe uh, rate us on iTunes or share us uh, with your friends. Yeah, get over there. Like, rate, share, comment. Yeah, and, uh, and get, tell us what you think. I got him, sir. Get him while they're home. It's fresh from God's brain to your mouth. He's got here in this radio station. Smite me! Oh, mighty smite! The Bible is black and white. I have such doubts. Get out of here, devil! I'm a god, not the god. I don't think. And you will know my name is the Lord! We're on a mission from God. Hey everybody, welcome to Believe It or Not. Yes indeed, back again for another weeky. Another round. Another round. Uh, Tripper in the sun. Uh, my name is Trevor Pullman. And I'm Damian Deppin. And today we're we're just going to dive right into it. Like uh, Tri- Trevor, what are we talking like about? so today? many Olympic swimmers. What are we talking about today? Uh, today, uh, okay, so do you know what a Pentecostal is? I've heard of it, but I uh, what, what it uh, exactly is, I have no idea. Okay. So Pentecostals, uh, it's a kind of a sect uh, a denomination. I mean, there's multiple do- denominations in this kind of thing, but kind of. Anyways, I'm I'm going off on a tangent there. But Pentecostals <laughs> um, are the ones who speak in tongues. Okay. Uh, jump out, you know, what speaking in tongues is yeah, yeah. Speaking it's in tongues like a, a gibberish. Yeah. <laughs> that means nothing. Or a holy language, depending on what you know who you're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Jewish. But we're talking to each other, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, they you know they believe in miracles and do all that stuff. Um, but this today we're going to talk about kind of the event that sparked this okay. denomination. Yeah, uh, it's the Az- Azusa Street Revival. Is that like a uh, Vavuzela? You know those oh, plastic for, horns from like the World Cup? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's. It's, you know think, what? I don't think I it think is. it has a lot of similarities. I don't think it, it, they're at all related, but they're both loud. Um, when was this a relatively recent? Um, I guess in the grand scheme of things, yeah. Like how recent like, are you talking? Um, Nineteen oh six. Okay. Yeah. So just over a hundred years ago, then. Mm-hmm. So uh, this all took place. This all went down in Los Angeles, California. Of course, it's the Americans. Yep. The Californians. California. Um, uh, have you ever seen the movie The Wizard? No. Uh, just remind me of it. It's a, it's a great movie. You should watch it. I used to watch it every year on my birthday. Um, it's uh, Fred Savage, mm-hmm. and he's going down. Uh, him and his little brother are going to California to play uh, video games. It's where they um, introduced it's the movie that uh, Mario, Mario Brothers 3 was released on oh really like, yeah that's what, how they announced it oh geez but um so what ended that tradition but, sorry to sidetrack <laughs> <laughs> why did you stop watching it on your birthday i don't know i should start again you should it's, it's a great movie but the kid would always the little kid would always be like california it was the only words he would say and so <laughs> whenever i think of california i think of that movie anyways moving along um our story though starts in texas um with a man named william j seymour Mm. William J. Seymour was a, a black man. He was uh, one eye. He had one eye. He lost an eye due to polio, and um, he was a holiness movement preacher. One eye um, willing. One eye willing. One eyed. Uh, oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> Holy crap! So we'll call him One Eyed Willie for the rest of this. Okay. Um, but yeah, he was the son of a freed slave. Uh, his dad was a um, what's that? A, a Civil War. Uh, vet, like vet, vet, yeah, yeah he fought, he fought, fought the, for the North, fought in the Civil War, and um, but yeah, he was a preacher, and he um, he kind of learned from this guy named uh, Param, uh, Charles Param, who taught that um, you can receive uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. which is different than your regular baptism. That's when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, and you, the evidence of this is that you speak in tongues, and so he started preaching about this. Okay. Now, in a lot of these charismatic churches, this is actually still highly debate, debated. Yeah. Some of them say that um, in order to prove that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have to speak in tongues. Others say you, you don't have to. There's other signs. And others say that um, you can only have true salvation if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking tongues. Mm. And some say it's just kind of an added 
benefit. Yeah, it's it's kind of like you know a little bonus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like actually really oh, made it. Like in, when like, you uh, when you buy a bottle of shampoo and it's got a little thing of body wash. On yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or like, yeah, we don't need to go on about we'll the free things you got because I, anyways. Um, so in nineteen, 19- I, I don't mean to diminish <laughs> in, in such a way, but I couldn't resist. Actually, when I say he learned from Charles uh, Parham, he, uh, I think Parham used to preach or mm-hmm. teach at this uh, seminary, and um, Seymour would. One eyed Willie would listen outside the door because he wasn't allowed in because he was a black. Oh, okay. But um, he was still very inspired, and they they did the two of them kind of created a, a mentor mentee relationship. Yeah. So so speaking in tongues, I should probably, other than whatever our validity of what it is. Yeah. Uh, what is the the precedent for that? Is it something that is in the Bible? It is. is it yeah. That it's in Acts two. Kind of okay. the book of Acts. Um, it's after. So Jesus went up to heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so end of the Gospels, Jesus rose from the dead. Ends there. He's just hanging out. Um, Except for in one of them, he he ascended into heaven. But in Acts, first chapter of Acts, he's still hanging out, and then he ascends into heaven. Acts 2, it's like all the disciples, a little while later, I think 40 days later, something like that. Don't quote me on that. Um, (laughs) They're all hanging out. Yeah. And they're not sure what to do because, like, oh, we've lost our way. We don't know what to do. Jesus is gone. Um, And that's when, like, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They started speaking in all these different languages. And um, everybody thought they were mad. And and except for the people who could understand their languages. And it just became, it was like the inciting incident for the apostles kind of going out and and preaching and stuff like that. So so it seems like they weren't necessarily speaking in tongues. They were speaking different languages. Yeah. And that's another thing too, is is there's other points in the, in the Bible where it kind of mentions speaking in tongues. Um, but it also talks about having that translation. And so sometimes in the Bible, it seems like it's, you're, it's a miraculous speaking in another language to reach somebody who speaks that language. Yeah. And other times it seems to be like a heavenly like prayer language. Okay. Um, but that, I think that's more spun. But yeah, because yeah. it's it seems like in I'm not gonna say it's a bastardization of it. But yeah. It's, it seems like it's it's kind of retconning uh, people being able to understand other people's languages yeah. and then making it something that you don't actually have to put any work into to do. Yeah. By making up a language. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. I, I don't know, it, it's, it just seems to be taking a miraculous idea and just devaluing it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. If they could speak other languages, that'd be that'd be wicked. Okay. I would be, like, on board yeah, for that. Yeah, they've had people try to, like, um, fake it. analyze, oh. like, they record... The languages they, they and then mm-hmm. they get linguistic people to see if there's any it, kind of like there's structure. Not, no, there's yeah. no syntax to it. Yeah, all. what I've what I've heard, it all sounded. Uh, it was uh, a few clips of the same person doing it, and they seem to be doing the same thing. Yeah, uh, pretty close. Yeah, just like the same patterns, but it wasn't yeah. like a language. No, no. Um. So okay. So uh, Seymour is preaching in in Houston, Texas, Texas at his home church. And a woman is visiting from L.A., visiting family, and hears him speaking. Her name is uh, something, Neely, Neely <laughs> Terry. So she hear, hears him speaking, really likes what he has to say. So she asks him if if he would come to L.A. and preach at uh, her church. Um, the, you know, he's like, yeah, we'll see, you know, whatever. And so she goes back to L.A., <laughs> and um, she tells her his like her church about him, so they invite him out. And he raises the money in 1906, uh, in February... 1906, he shows up, and um, after getting a blessing from Charles Parham and his church to go and preach for a month, I think he was supposed to be there, mm-hmm. and um, first sermon he preaches on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with uh, evidence and speaking in tongues, and uh, second week he shows up, and uh, every account I say shows that there was padlocks on the door, but I don't know, I don't understand how, how the congregation got in then, but uh, they wouldn't let him in. Uh, second week because he was preaching on something they didn't necessarily agree with. Plus, he had never himself experienced it. He had never spoken in tongues himself. So why was he preaching on something that he had okay. never experienced? So um, they, they probably all came in early and locked the door. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, they had passed notes and like next week come. But in if early. they padlocked it from the outside, how did they get in? Yeah, exactly. 
So there's well, there's a, one of the elders was waiting outside, and like, nah. Oh. So, but there was there were people in the church that liked him, and uh, one of the families let him stay at their place, mm-hmm. and they started doing prayer meetings there, and um, I think they were in a ten day fast. Um, they were three days, two or three days into a ten day fast, praying yeah. for the Holy Spirit to come down, and that's when people started like. Um, speaking in tongues and, and yeah. all that stuff. That's when he experienced it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing. I've definitely been involved in that kind of thing where everybody... It's like when you really have that excitement and, and anticipation waiting for something like that to happen, mm-hmm. it it's it can, uh, it can be pretty easy to convince yourself that... I, yeah. I, can, I can see that, and I can especially yeah. see when you're with a group of people who are all kind of anticipating as well. Yeah. It, it's something that kind of builds, and then... I, I mean, if you're in three days into doing it... Yeah, so you haven't eaten in three days. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I get I get anxious yeah. and goofy when I go, like, eight hours without eating sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But then, you know, it kind of started growing, and people started coming out, and people started... Um, um, just coming to pray with them and to, to experience these things. And so they yeah. moved to a bigger house um, on North Bonnie Bay Street. It was a giant house. It's actually a kind of a museum now to them. Um, so And then people would come there and they would fill the house and have meetings kind of 24-7. So they realized that uh, they needed to find another place. They found an old um, barn slash warehouse on Azusa Street Turned it into a church. Okay, Azusa Street. That's uh, yeah, yeah, and that's where basically for three years they had pretty much nonstop services for three years straight. Mm-hmm. And when people would come in, and um, there was so many claims of like miracles and and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like so the Azusa Street place was just this run down kind of yeah place that it was ready to be condemned and they fixed it up and then they just started going at one point charles Perham came by to do some guest speaking and guest preaching and stuff and he was um you know uh successful i guess but he also wanted to take over <laughs> okay. and so seymour was like get out of here yeah. <laughs> so then william seymour and it's like this is mine so. yeah <laughs> So yeah, William Senior, uh, Seymour kind of like was like, no, 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 this is this is my jam, um, but that it kept going pretty solid for three years, and the church itself went for another, I think, ten years after that. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, it was torn down, but it was so. From there, that's when they kind of organized, and I think it was like the Apo- Apostolic Faith Church is what they called it mm-hmm. at first, and then eventually changed uh, to the just the Pentecostal Church. Okay. And that's kind of how the Pentecostal Church started, just kind of out of this one little meeting in, mm-hmm. in uh, California. Yeah, and uh, so I know I've told you before, I don't know if I mentioned on the podcast, but it's, it's funny looking into religious topics and trying to look at it from an outsider's perspective yep. about what really happened. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever experienced it more than looking up this one, because yeah. when you involve the supernatural, mm-hmm. there it just it can turn into folklore. Yeah, and um, there was there's one guy um, I found I don't remember his name, but he's like supposed to be the last surviving member, and this is I don't think he's around anymore. But he was a little kid at the time, and he went on like a book tour in the eighties and nineties talking about all the miracles he saw happen at Azusa Street. Okay. And so a lot of people take that kind of as canon, but I think he was just selling a book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, kind of jumping on there. The but yeah. uh, one of the common stories I've heard from multiple people is that um, the Holy Spirit was so strong in this place that uh, it looked like there was um, flames coming out of the top of the building going right up to heaven, and the fire department was called multiple times. But what, what's interesting about that to me is that I didn't really see that coming around before this guy mm-hmm. was talking about it. Um, I saw an interview with some other people that were there, an interview from the, from the 70s, and they were talking about how exciting it was and stuff like that, but I feel like they would have mentioned that. Yeah, I think more than one person would have noticed a fire going yeah. this guy. Yeah, and they said that happened both at, um, at the first house at the Bay Street or whatever, or mm-hmm. the, uh, what's that called? 
the Bonnie Bay, Bray Street, and they said it happened at the Azusa Street place. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't check your sources on that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, if you uh, if you uh, listener has more sources for that actually happening, let me know. Uh, another video I saw uh, was a church that um, I think it was a church that reenacted kind of some of the events, and one of the guys working on it was you know pretty good at CGI. It's pretty good at special mm-hmm. effects, and they actually showed a. Uh, a guy getting a limb grown back. And that's oh, yeah. a story that, yeah, from there that like people's <laughs> limbs would grow back. Oh man. Um, like, yeah, like they described it as like flesh growing around the bone and then, and then growing into a full arm or whatever. Um, so it, would this be part of like the faith healing kind of movie oh, yeah. as well? Yeah. Is that a big part of what yeah. it, I'm saying big part, like, uh, how, how predominant is like the tongue speaking in tongues, like faith healing within the within the pentecostal yeah it's all connected division. is it yeah. is it like that's what all of them are or is it kind of uh more like extreme groups of pentecostals who are more into that while others are a little yeah. more it's hard to say now um i think you know most pentecostal churches are just your basic home mm-hmm. um family churches yep with a little bit of a spin you know so they okay. they probably are gonna have speaking in tongues every Every service, mm-hmm. probably, they're gonna have um, prayer for healing. You know, if your your grandma's in the hospital, or whatever they're gonna yep. pray for and stuff. But they're probably also gonna host a, a faith healer once in a while to come in. And, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's most of them are probably gonna do some of that stuff, but feels more like just your regular home, mm-hmm. whatever church. Um, I went to a church for a while in Calgary when I was um, kind of at the end of it, you know, kind of giving things up. And yeah. um, it was part of a charismatic denomination, not Pentecostal, but obviously like probably somewhere along the line in its mm-hmm. ancestry. Um, the denomination had some roots in Pentecostals, but the church I went to barely ever barely ever mentioned it mm. except for once in a while they'd be like oh yeah by the way we're this kind of church <laughs> <laughs> and that's when i was like all right uh, bye guys <laughs> that's fair. but yeah it was funny i uh i did uh, a video project for them and uh i went in because they had something for me i think just a thank you card with like a starbucks gift card or something like that for making this video for them and so i went in after i had kind of walked away from a lot of it and uh and they were doing a a service to for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, yep. um, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So everybody's just like in these little groups, mm-hmm. and they're just praying so hard and like shaking back and forth and stuff like that. And I'm just going to get like a gift card for Starbucks. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Like, oh, good. How are you? Do you want to participate in this thing? Nah. <laughs> but I would have in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would I would feel so uncomfortable in a situation. Yeah. Like that. I, I find it weird when too many people are hugging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just like anyone along going to McDonald's or you just you're know, gonna just do this okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my quick rundown of the um Azusa Street hmm. um mission. Oh, another thing that I found interesting, they didn't have any oh, I had a full other page here. <laughs> yeah, let's see, whatever yeah, I think I just covered all of it. Um yeah. Uh, they didn't have any music, no live music or anything like that, except really? for the instruments that the angels played. And you can hear that in your heart. So, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so no instruments. No instruments. Yeah. No instruments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's Azusa Street in a nutshell. Any mm-hmm. questions? Uh, <laughs> um, that's interesting. The, the no, no, I mean... It seems to be kind of like a split about which denominations are yeah. going to be like very music yeah. heavy, whether it's just one instrument or a full band. Yeah. Um, Most Pentecostal churches now, they're going to have um, like a full band with mm-hmm. like drums and everything like that. They're very, uh, very much like in the Psalms, it says, you know, um, beat a drum, play your trumpet or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, so they'll, they'll join in. Other churches, I think United Pentecostal, which is like a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they, I don't think they have music. I think they're just like mm-hmm. um, only hymn books and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hit the drop. 
Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. All right, Christian uh, Christian rock lyric of the week. Speaking of music. <clears throat> Speaking of music, this is a band called Hawk Nelson. Hawk Nelson. Is now, it a person or is it a band? Uh, it's a band, I believe. Okay. I never liked them. Oh. They came out right... Um, I think I was still a youth leader, um, and some of the kids were into them, but I hated them so much. And I always thought they called themselves Hawk Nelson because all their fans had uh, faux ox. Um, I don't think that's true, but <laughs> um, wasn't a fan. Um, but they have a song just came out last year called Miracles. Oh, this is a new one. This is a new one. Relatively. Yeah. And here's the chorus. Like the fire in the night, like the ocean parted wide, like the grave empty inside, you will see he still does miracles, 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 miracles. Hmm. So I, I was looking for a song to that had something to do with miracles, and I found this song. Uh, actually, sorry, the song is called He Still Does, in parentheses, miracles. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to point out that uh, lighting a fire at night, as far as I know, is it a miracle? Nope. Uh, like the oceans parted wide, I think they're referring to the tides? <laughs> Probably. Caused by the moon? Or the, the whole, you know, the, uh, uh, in Egypt and spreading the things. Maybe. Oh, maybe. But maybe that's, that's a sea, right? That is, well, I guess that would be a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that might be what it's alluding to. Yeah, you might but be right. from my limited knowledge of, uh, Christmas specials. Yeah. Like, oh, like the grave empty inside, I'm sure they're talking about the resurrection of Christ. Mm. I'm sure they're not just talking about an empty the, grave. Oh, the great empty. Just a reg... Grave robbers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they're not referring to grave robbers. So. Or uh, fake deaths. Yeah. Yeah. So, there there we have it. Uh, miracles. I find... I, okay, so we've been doing this for a few weeks now, mm. and doing the Christian rock lyric, and one thing I gotta say is... Their music is very boring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not the best written stuff. Yeah. It's, it's very repetitive and very simplistic. Yeah. And it's all focused, obviously, on, on a very similar theme. But yeah. you'd think there would be, like, a little more creativity. It's true. I mean, yeah. I should bring in... Uh, there's a couple bands that I think are, like... Page of the Line, I'm going to see them pretty soon. They were a Christian band, but they're also not anymore. David Bazan's an atheist now. Mm -hmm. But their lyrics are always amazing. Yeah. Uh, Me Without You is a Christian band. Uh, they have beautiful lyrics. Mm -hmm. uh, my, they're one of my favorite bands. Um, <laughs> this could just be the stuff that you that, that, I'm, that I'm choosing. But yeah, are, are but most, really for the ones. most part, there's like that, that CCM, the contemporary Christian music industry, is... They record everything the same way. They write everything the same way. It's, it's kind very of like uh, country pop. Yeah, today. exactly. Same yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. It focuses on the, the just the, the the beats that they want. Yeah, that make it wide appeal. Yeah, um, uh, which is which is bizarre. Mm -hmm. I actually thought about using um, it. Just didn't count as Christian rock, so I didn't use it. But mm -hmm. I really thought about using that. Uh, um, Insane Clown Posse song, Miracles. Oh, right. Yes, yes. Fucking Magnus, how do they work? Yep. I don't want to talk to a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> my, my thing is about that, too, though, getting back to the simplicity of it. Yeah. You, you would think that something that's supposed to be about worship and something that's supposed to be important, there would be uh, more attention to it. Yeah. And there would be more of a... I, I don't... I, an effort? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I read, uh, I was reading this book. Um, I think it's called, yeah, Blue Like Jazz. I read it years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a Christian book. But uh, in it, they were talking about, they were at a Christian record store. And, uh, uh, no, they are at a regular record store. And uh, he said, find me the um, most unattractive person you can on a uh, uh, album cover. Mm -hmm. And so they went through and found uh, some polka mix or something like that with like a big yeah. a big guy with an accordion not that big guys can't be unattractive but I guess this guy was yeah and uh and then they went to a Christian record store afterwards and he's like find me the most unattractive person you can and they just everybody was just so polished <laughs> and cause the yeah. whole Christian music industry is about <clears throat> just marketing 
and trying to get the kids liking it because they think, oh yeah, if they listen to Christian music, they're not going to listen to this awful other stuff. Yeah. So it's so polished and it's so I mean, so a lot of music over. is too. It's yeah. disingenuous to yeah. say that it's just the Christian music. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was meaning it in more the sense of, uh, I understand the music industry is always going to have that, but yeah. for something that's supposed to be about like worship, I yeah. find that a strange kind of uh, direction that it's yeah. in. I get it, but it's also a little... Maybe disappointing. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I had another point. Oh, what was I going to say? I totally forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, I wonder if by the, like the fire of the night, they're referring to, uh, uh, Moses, the beam of fire that led them out. Cause if he's saying that and then, so maybe, you know, they're talking about the Bible. Um, mm. but I still say they're talking about lighting a fire at night. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Well, or maybe they're talking about the fire on top of the well, Street. Well, how are you supposed to find your matches? That's true. In the yeah, dark. That's true. Yeah. Can't do it. Magnets, how do they work? <laughs> <laughs> we should, uh, we should, because uh, you're saying the one, like in another band, the one guy's an atheist. We should talk about Slayer sometime. Oh, yeah. Because uh, they're all pretty atheist, except the lead singer. He's Catholic. Actually. That's right, yeah. 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 Um, but Carrie King is uh, super hardcore atheist. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and those are fun lyrics, too. Yeah. <laughs> might, might be a nice little contrast. Yeah. Uh, we sh- yeah, you should do your uh, oh, yeah. atheist rock lyric <laughs> of the week. Slayer lyric of the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can do that. Great. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, believe it or not. And uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Work, work, work. Sky moon. <laughs> <laughs>